ബിൽഡറായ അസറ്റ് ഹോംസ് സംഘടിപ്പിച്ചു വരുന്ന ബിയോൺ സ്ക്വയർ ഫീറ്റ് എന്ന പ്രഭാഷണ പരമ്പരയിലെ പതിനഞ്ചാമത്തെ എഡിഷനാണ് ഇന്നിവിടെ നടക്കാനിരിക്കുന്നത് ഈ വർഷം ഒക്ടോബർ ഏഴ് ലോക പാർപ്പിട ദിനമായി ആചരിക്കപ്പെടുന്നതിനോടനുബന്ധിച്ചാണ് ഇവിടെ ഈ ഒത്തുചേരൽ ഏവരെയും സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുകയാണ് Today we have here in connection with the World Habitat Day which falls on the 7th of October. We have here with us eminent personalities but before we move on to the exciting part of the day let's invoke the blessings of the Lord Almighty. Nanmaya kunna kaandi paanuvan kanninaadi ശീലു ചൊല്ലുവാൻ നാവിനാകേണമേ സ്നേഹമാകുന്ന ഗീതമോയെന്റെ കാതിനിണയാകണേ സത്യമെന്നുള്ള ശീലമോടെ ഞാൻ ശാന്തി with us many of our friends from different sectors but for our guests who are here for the first time allow us to play the corporate video of us at homes to give you an idea about the origin history evolution and growth of us at homes as at homes idvare pinitta naal valigale kurichulla oru hraswa chitram Welcome to Kerala, God's own country, the land of assets. Kerala is now the land of assets. Over the years, with projects across all major cities in Kerala, Asset Homes has made it so. along with hundreds of care lights from across the world i too am a proud owner of an asset when it comes to owning a home today asset homes is kerala's first choice a seed was sown in 2007 it grew nurturing relationships to spread its trade of responsibility known as nanma madam the asset value tree is rooted in four unfailing values prompt delivery total quality customer centricity and societal responsibility i believe like justice a home delayed is a home denied i received my asset on time and so did all others asset homes is the first and youngest builder in kerala to complete 58 projects in 12 years since inception spanning from tiruvananthapuram to kannur they stand as testimonies to asset homes promise of prompt delivery from food to home decor i am a stickler for quality because whatever is of high quality lasts like my asset home their uncompromising commitment to quality 
made as it homes the youngest builder in India to receive Trizzle DA2 Plus rating in just 12 years. As it homes is also the first and only builder in India to receive Trizzle 7 star rating for three residential projects. I maintain my work-life balance. The Asset Delight team keeps me absolutely tension-free. They help me fetch my grocery, pay my bills, you name it. <laughs> Asset Homes in the customers, no? Asset Homes in the Delight service. Mm. Mm. Asset Delight is a bouquet of 17 unique services to the customer, including 25 years free insurance coverage for the apartments and villas, free transit home facility, and many more to ensure that the residents have a comfortable and convenient lifestyle. Founded by a technocrat, V. Sunil Kumar, Asset Homes is led by an eminent board of directors. The company is run by a team of professional leaders and closely guided by an advisory board. The true asset of Asset Homes is the dedicated employees. Together, they have won laurels for the company, including national and international awards and recognitions. Nam order trukum, Veda in the Varinda, Namode Daya, Urcheria Provence in the Niana. Asset Homes in a Samanjurthalam, Oro Nurmudim Totushastram, and the Velical Piguna, Square Feet Ulgum Aprodana. Namada Natla Nemung Lodum, Pragurdi Odum, Sahaji Vulodum. Uttaravata Mulavarikua in the Bola name, Valeria Prathani Mulonana, Oro Bokta in the Alpirum Lodum, Uttaravata Mulavarikua and Lodu. Asset Homes Vishosiguna, eight two Lukua Prate Shastro, is the Niana. Evil Kashakti Bagara, Pragurdi Uruvaramaka. Or you take in the Nada, or you muggle commendi. As it responsibly yours, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. Sri Sunil Kumar, Managing Director, Asset Homes, is a futuristic and innovative developer who has many firsts to his credit in the realty sector. Presently, I invite Sunil sir to the stage to welcome the audience. Vishishta Viktigalim, Sadhisariyam Sagadam Chiyuan, Asset Homes in the Sarathi, Sri Sunil Kumar, Ne Vibhidekya Kshenike Giyana. Even in October, I am going to be a part of the day. Technologies as an innovative tool to transform waste to wealth. If you have a lot of money, you can get a lot of money. 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 നമുക്കെല്ലാവർക്കും <laughs> Havanangalakurunda 
ഗൗരവം എത്രത്തോളമാണ് മനുഷ്യൻ മനസ്സിലാക്കുന്നതെന്നുള്ളതിനുള്ള ഏറ്റവും തെളിവാണ് ഇന്ന് ഇവരുടെ മുമ്പിൽ ലോകപ്രശസ്ത വാസ്തുശില്പിയായിട്ടുള്ള ശ്രീ ക്രിസ്റ്റഫർ സി ബെനഞ്ചറെ പോലുള്ള അത്യുന്നതനായ ഒരു വ്യക്തിത്വത്തെ എത്തിക്കുവാൻ കഴിഞ്ഞതിലും ഈ വിഷയത്തെക്കുറിച്ച് സംസാരിപ്പിക്കുവാനുള്ള അവസരം നൽകിയതിലും അസറ്റ് ഹോംസിനുള്ള ആഹ്ലാദവും ചാരിതാർത്ഥവും ആത്മനിർവൃതിയും ഈ അവസരത്തിൽ ആദ്യമായിട്ട് ഞാൻ രേഖപ്പെടുത്തട്ടെ നമുക്കറിയാം ലോകമെമ്പാടുമുള്ള വാസ്തുശില്പികളും നിർമ്മാണ രംഗത്ത് പ്രവർത്തിക്കുന്നവരും ഈ മേഖലയുമായി പ്രവർ ബന്ധപ്പെട്ട മുഴുവൻ ആളുകളും സുസ്ഥിരമായ വികസന സങ്കല്പങ്ങളിൽ ഊന്നിയുള്ള നിർമ്മിതികളെക്കുറിച്ചുള്ള ചർച്ചകളിൽ ഏർപ്പെട്ടിരിക്കുന്ന ഈ കാലഘട്ടത്തിൽ കേരളം പോലുള്ള ഒരു സംസ്ഥാനത്ത് എങ്ങനെ നിർമ്മിതികൾ പൊളിച്ചു മാറ്റാം എന്നുള്ള വിഷയത്തെക്കുറിച്ച് ഗഹനമായ ചർച്ചകൾ നടക്കുകയാണ് വളരെ സങ്കടകരമായ ഒരു അന്തരീക്ഷത്തിൽ നമ്മുടെ തലയ്ക്ക് മുകളിൽ നിൽക്കുന്ന ഒരു വിധിന്യായത്തിൻ്റെ ഉള്ളടക്കങ്ങളിലേക്കോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അതിന് ഉപോൽബലകമായി തീർന്ന നിയമലംഘനപ്പങ്ങളെ പറ്റിയോ ഒന്നും തന്നെ സൂചിപ്പിക്കാതെ ഒരു നിർമ്മാണം ഇല്ലായ്മ ചെയ്യുമ്പോഴുണ്ടാവുന്ന പ്രവൃത്തി ഒരു നിർമ്മാണം നമ്മൾ ഉന്മൂലനം ചെയ്യുമ്പോഴുണ്ടാവുന്ന പ്രവൃത്തി മൂലം അത് നിർമ്മിച്ചതിനേക്കാളും വലിയ നാശമാണ് പരിസ്ഥിതിക്ക് സൃഷ്ടിക്കുക എന്ന് മാത്രം പറഞ്ഞു വയ്ക്കാൻ ഞാൻ ഈ അവസരം ഉപയോഗിക്കുകയാണ് മാനസികമായും ശാരീരികമായും സാമൂഹികമായും സാമ്പത്തികമായും പ്രകൃതിക്ക് വിരുദ്ധമായും ഉള്ള വലിയ ആഘാതങ്ങളാണ് പൊളിക്കലുകൾ സൃഷ്ടിക്കുക നമുക്ക് ചിന്തിക്കേണ്ടത് പൊളിച്ചെടുക്കലുകളെ കുറിച്ചല്ല മറിച്ച് സുസ്ഥിരമായ നിർമ്മിതികളെ കുറിച്ചാണ് അസറ്റ് ഹോംസിനെ സംബന്ധിച്ചിടത്തോളം ഓരോ ഉപഭോക്താവിനോടും ഓരോ തൊഴിലാളിയോടും ഓരോ പ്രോജക്റ്റിനോടും നിലവിലുള്ള നിയമങ്ങളോടും പ്രകൃതിയോടും ഉത്തരവാദിത്തമുള്ളവരായിരിക്കുക എന്ന അടിസ്ഥാന പ്രമാണത്തിൻ്റെ ഭാഗമാണ് സമൂഹത്തോടും ഉത്തരവാദിത്തമുള്ളവരായിരിക്കുക എന്നുള്ളത് ഏത് അടിസ്ഥാന വിശ്വാസത്തിൻ്റെ കാര്യത്തിലാണെങ്കിലും പ്രവർത്തനത്തിനോടൊപ്പം തന്നെ വേണ്ട കാര്യങ്ങളാണ് പ്രഭാഷണങ്ങളും ചിന്താശകലങ്ങൾ സംപ്രേക്ഷണം ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ സംഭവിക്കുന്നത് ആശയങ്ങളുടെ വിലയിരുത്തലുകളാണ് നല്ല പ്രഭാഷകൻ്റെ ഓരോ വാക്കും ഓരോ വരിയും ഒരു വലിയ ആഹ്വാനമാണ് ഇന്ന് ഈ വേദിയിൽ നിന്നുയരുന്ന ഒരു വാചകമെങ്കിലും ഇവിടെ കൂടിയിരിക്കുന്ന ഒരു മനുഷ്യനെയെങ്കിലും സ്വാധീനിക്കാൻ കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ അസറ്റ് ഹോംസ് ഏറ്റെടുത്ത ഈ ബിയോണ്ട് സ്ക്വയർ ഫീറ്റ് എന്ന പ്രഭാഷണ പരമ്പര ഗുണകരമായി തീർന്നു എന്ന് നിങ്ങൾ വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നു ബിയോണ്ട് സ്ക്വയർ ഫീറ്റ് എന്ന പദം ഒരു നിർമ്മാതാവ് ഉച്ചരിക്കുമ്പോൾ അതിന് മറ്റു വിശദീകരണങ്ങൾ ആവശ്യമില്ലാതാവുകയാണ് എല്ലാ അർത്ഥത്തിലും ആ വാചകത്തിന് അന്തസ്സത്ത പൂർണ്ണമായി ഉൾക്കൊണ്ടുകൊണ്ടാണ് കഴിഞ്ഞ അഞ്ചു വർഷങ്ങളായി വർഷത്തിൽ മൂന്ന് പ്രാവശ്യം വീതം അസറ്റ് ഹോംസ് ഇത്തരം പ്രഭാഷണ പരിപാടികൾ സംഘടിപ്പിക്കുന്നത് മാർച്ച് ഇരുപത്തിരണ്ട് ലോക ജനദി ജലദിനം ജൂൺ അഞ്ച് ലോക പരിസ്ഥിതി ദിനം ഒക്ടോബറിലെ ആദ്യത്തെ തിങ്കളാഴ്ച ലോക പാർപ്പിട ദിനം ഈ മൂന്ന് ദിവസങ്ങളിലാണ് എല്ലാ വർഷവും ബിയോണ്ട് സ്ക്വയർ ഫീറ്റ് എന്ന പ്രഭാഷണ പരമ്പര നടക്കുന്നത് ടുഡേ വി ഹാവ് വിത്ത് എസ് എൻ എമിനൻ പേഴ്സണാലിറ്റി എ ഗ്രേറ്റ് പേഴ്സണാലിറ്റി എ ഗ്രേറ്റ് ആർക്കിടെക്ട് പ്രൊഫസർ ക്രിസ്റ്റഫർ സി ബെനഞ്ചർ വിത്ത് എസ് ഐ ഹാവ് ദ പ്രിവിലേജ് ഓഫ് മീറ്റിംഗ് ഹിം ഇൻ നയൻറ്റീൻ എൻ്റെ ഗുരുനാഥന്മാരായിട്ടുള്ള ശ്രീ സുരേഷ് ജോൺ ശ്രീ ബാബുനാനാൻ്റെയും കൂടെ കൊച്ചിൻ റിഫൈനറിൽ ഒരു വർഷം ട്രെയിനി ആയിട്ട് ജോലി ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ഇത്രയും വലിയൊരു വ്യക്തിത്വത്തെയാണ് ഞാൻ മീറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നതെന്ന് എനിക്ക് അന്ന് തോന്നിയിരുന്നില്ല ഇന്ത്യയിലെ തന്നെ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ലോകത്തിലെ തന്നെ വാസ്തുശില്പികളുടെ കുലപതി അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഗുരു എന്ന് വിശേഷിപ്പിക്കാവുന്ന ശ്രീ ക്രിസ്റ്റഫർ സിബിനഞ്ചറെ വിത്ത് ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് പ്രൈവറ്റ് ഐ ടേക്ക് ദിസ് ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി ടു എക്സ്റ്റൻഡ് ഹാർട്ടി വെൽക്കം ടു യു സർ അദ്ദേഹത്തോടൊപ്പം വിടുത്തി ചേർന്ന അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ കൊളീഗ് ശ്രീ രാം പ്രസാദിനെയും ഞാൻ ഈ അവസരത്തിലേക്ക് സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു മുഖ്യാതിഥിക്ക് ഉപഹാരം സമർപ്പിക്കാനായി എത്തി ഇവിടെ എത്തിച്ചേർന്നിരിക്കുന്നത് നമുക്ക് ഏവർക്കും പ്രിയപ്പെട്ട എറണാകുളത്തെ ഏറ്റവും പ്രിയങ്കരനായ അധ്യാപകൻ എന്ന് വിശേഷിപ്പിക്കുന്ന തേവര സേക്രട്ട് ഹാർട്ട് കോളേജിൻ്റെ പ്രിൻസിപ്പലും അതിനോടുപരി പ്രകൃതിയോടടങ്ങുന്ന ജീവിതത്തിലൂടെ പ്രകൃതിയോടെ സ്നേഹിക്കുന്ന മാർഗത്തിലൂടെ മുഴുവൻ കൊച്ചി നഗരവാസികൾക്കും മാതൃകയായിട്ടുള്ള ഫാദർ പ്രശാന്ത് പാലയ്ക്കപ്പള്ളിയാണ് അദ്ദേഹത്തെയും ഞാൻ ഈ വേദിയിലേക്ക് സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു ഇവിടെ എത്തിച്ചേർന്നിരിക്കുന്ന എറണാകുളത്തെ ബഹുമാന്യരായ മുഴുവൻ പൗരാവലിയെയും ഏറെ
വലിയ ശക്തി പകർന്നു വന്നിരിക്കുന്ന പത്ര ദൃശ്യ ശ്രവ്യ മാധ്യമ സുഹൃത്തുക്കളെയും ഞാൻ ഈ വേദിയിലേക്ക് സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു അസറ്റോം സംഘടിപ്പിക്കുന്ന ബിയോൺ സ്ക്വയർ ഫീറ്റിൻ്റെ തുടർന്നുള്ള എഡിഷനിലേക്കും നിങ്ങളുടെ എല്ലാവരുടെയും ആത്മാർത്ഥമായ സഹകരണം പ്രതീക്ഷിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ ഉപസംഹരിക്കുന്നു We have amongst us today architect Christopher Charles Benninger, one of the most sought after architects of the country. For the past 50 years, he has made India his home and has been relentlessly contributing to the profession of architecture and planning. After completing his studies from MIT and Harvard University, Christopher began his teaching career at the School of Architecture, Ahmedabad, Harvard's Graduate School of Design, the school of planning at amdavad which he founded with architect balakrishna doshi in late 1971 and at the center for development studies and activities multiple award winning master architect christopher's interest in urban development and planning took him from sri lanka across india and up to the himalayan kingdom of bhutan where he has planned many cities and regions his works such as supreme court of bhutan National Ceremonial Plaza, UN House and other civic institutions in Bhutan continue the strong traditions of craftsmanship in Bhutan, applying them to modern contexts. He is presently engaged in the design of a university in China, as well as of the world's largest pharmacy research center in Shanghai, China, where 3,000 scientists will discover the cures for nervous system-related disorders. Asim Premji University in Bengaluru, the Indian Institute of Technology at Hyderabad and the new academic center at SEPT University, Ahmedabad are some of his ongoing works. He resides and works from India House in Pune, where a team of 30 architects support his studio. His books and several writings contribute to the theories of planning and architecture. His Letters to a Young Architect won the Best Architecture Book of the Year Award 2012. The book has been translated into Gujarati, Bangla and Chinese. His latest book Architecture for Modern India was published in Italy. America il janichu valarnu MIT Harvard enni pramukha sarvagalashalagalil ninnum birudangal eduthiya professor Beninyu kazhinja 50 varshamayi Indiyilana thamasam. Ahmedabadile School of Architecture, Harvard Graduate School of Design enna veil adhyapaganai sevanam anishtichcha shesham ആർക്കിടെക്ട് ബാലകൃഷ്ണ ദോഷിയുമായി ചേർന്ന് അഹമ്മദാബാദിലെ സ്കൂൾ ഓഫ് പ്ലാനിങ് ഇദ്ദേഹം സ്ഥാപിച്ചു ഒട്ടേറെ ആഗോള അംഗീകാരങ്ങൾ നേടിയിട്ടുള്ള അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ വിവിധങ്ങളായ വാസ്തുശില്പങ്ങൾ ഇന്ത്യ ഭൂട്ടാൻ ശ്രീലങ്ക തുടങ്ങിയ രാജ്യങ്ങളിലുണ്ട് ചെറുപ്പക്കാരായ ആർക്കിടെക്ടുകളെ ലക്ഷ്യമിട്ട് അദ്ദേഹം എഴുതിയ ലെറ്റേഴ്സ് ടു എ യങ് ആർക്കിടെക്ട് എന്ന പുസ്തകം രണ്ടായിരത്തി പന്ത്രണ്ടിലെ ബെസ്റ്റ് ആർക്കിടെക്ചർ പുസ്തകത്തിനുള്ള അവാർഡ് നേടി ലോകം കണ്ട ഏറ്റവും പ്രഗത്ഭരായ ആർക്കിടെക്ടുകളിൽ ഒരാളായ അദ്ദേഹം ഇന്നിവിടെ സസ്റ്റൈനബിൾ ആർക്കിടെക്ചർ ഫോർ അവർ ഹാബിറ്റാറ്റ്സ് എന്ന വിഷയത്തെ ആസ്പദമാക്കി സംസാരിക്കുന്നു ബഹുമാനപ്പെട്ട എം ഡി ഇവിടെ സൂചിപ്പിച്ച പോലെ പാർപ്പിട സമുച്ചയങ്ങളെക്കുറിച്ച് ഏറ്റവും അധികം ചർച്ച ചെയ്യപ്പെടുന്ന ഈ ദിനങ്ങളിൽ ഈ വിഷയം ഏറെ പ്രസക്തവുമാണ് ലേഡീസ് ആൻഡ് ജെൻമൻ പ്ലീസ് പുറ്റ് യുവർ ഹാൻഡ്സ് ടുഗേദർ ടു വെൽക്കം ആർക്കിടെക്ട് ക്രിസ്റ്റഫർ ചാൾസ് ബെനിഞ്ഞ Thank you for that lovely introduction. Actually, I think that first film we saw was an example of sustainability. It was an idea about harmony. In my opinion, environment simply means harmony and it means aesthetics. Aesthetics is balance, aesthetics is beauty, aesthetics is harmony. And I think Kerala has something very unique to give the world. Your harmony between people of different belief systems, your harmony in nature. If you see images of Kerala from the air or even on the ground, it's a beautiful state. Now, I first came here in 1972 to meet a gentleman called Laurie Baker and a, an economist, K. N. Raj in Trivandrum, to, to take their advice on starting a school of planning in Amdavar. 20 years later, I was very fortunate to come here uh, to meet a young man sitting on the front row, Babu Nainan, and we started working on, at that time, uh, for Cochin Refineries, 
a, a center for training people in environment and how to manage uh, petroleum products in particular in environment. Unfortunately, certain events took place which made that project impossible. And about three, four years later, uh, we started again working on the Cochin Refineries headquarters building at Maradua, which is now a, a training center for the refinery. Now, that event brought me in contact with this young man called V. Sunil. He was a trainee at that time on our site. We also had Babu Nayan, who's sitting here uh, working with us. We had Suresh John, who was at that time uh, a, a junior engineer. He's now a senior general manager. Uh, we had Ganesh, whose daughter works for me in Pune, uh, Shwati Ganesh, and a friend of mine who couldn't come today, Cora Anshari. So if I want to talk to you about sustainability, about environment, I can only speak as, a, as an architect, as an artist, as a person who tries to create things of beauty. So a little bit, if I talk on this, I like to talk about culture, which is our patterns of behavior, which persist over time, how those patterns can be harmonious with nature, how nature involves land, animals, air, water, earth, everything around us, and it has to work in balance. And fortunately or unfortunately, it's the government's job primarily to see that all these things work in balance. But we should also inculcate in young people through school and college courses, every school in the state, every primary school should teach something about environment to youngsters. Because in the end, it's through the people of the state, the people in communities, uh, that will have a balanced and harmonious life. Now, having said that, let me start my presentation. Uh, I wish I could show you the Cochin refineries and talk about that, but you all probably know what it looks like. Unfortunately, my friends in the refinery tend to paint it funny colors every couple of years. Um, so <laughs> it has some funny colors on it. But that building was a kind of a, uh, a breakthrough in environment when it was built. I'll tell you why. People wanted a corporate headquarters, and in India in the early 1990s, corporate headquarters meant a glass box. Glass box let a lot of light in and a lot of heat, and it means you have to spend a lot of energy and money on air conditioning. So we came up with the idea, why don't we have, we'll have the windows, we'll have the glass box, but we'll cover it with louvers. And like an umbrella or a parasol that protects people from the sun and keeps it cool, we won't let any sun come directly in the building, but we'll have these louvers and you can see through them. Now, those louvers cut the energy uh, cost of that building by about 31%. <coughs> and we calculated what would be the cost to air condition that building over a year. And if you save that cost 31%, in 21 years, with the money we saved on air conditioning that building paid for the whole building. So that building made an argument that in being environmentally sensitive doesn't cost money, it actually saves you money. So that was the beginning of, of a long search for harmony and aesthetics in environment here in, in Cochin. And I'm so happy my friends are sitting here, some of them who worked with me many, many years ago, and especially, of course, my host, uh, V. Uh, uh, Sunil. And uh, so, could we start the presentation? I'm going to show you some of my work. Uh, Suzlan One Earth is a very important project in Pune. It's about a one million square foot project. Uh, it's a project of a wind energy company, a company that has wind farms, makes turbines, makes blades, and has a, a world presence. Now, uh, can we start? Ram, you'll be doing that? OK. So this was the site we were working on in Pune. This is the site in 2005. Now, this is a good uh, image of the problems of environment. So the next picture in 2009, look at what happened to that neighborhood. That neighborhood got completely built up. In the middle of it is our Suzlan One Earth project. This, when it was built, was uh, rated in, by the American LEED program as the most uh, the greenest, most sustainable building of its type in the world. Uh, it produced about 9% of the energy on site, and it imported the rest of the energy from a wind farm outside. So it was a carbon-free project. There was no carbon used to run this project. When I started working on the project, I wanted to, to, to have 
uh, it to be an Indian building. In fact, the chairman of this company said, I'm just giving you one advice. When people come here, I want them to know they're in India, but I also want them to feel that they're in a global uh, headquarters of a high-tech company. So I said, okay, things which I instantly many learned from Kerala, like having a deep stum, having water inside, having a pedestrian precinct, all of these things in the first week when I was designing Suzla and whenever I started doing these kind of sketches of things which are very traditional in India, and I wanted to bring them into the project. I also wanted to have a central focus in this very large 1 million square foot corporate headquarters. So I wanted to put a deep stum in the middle of a kind of a Zen garden. So this was a very quick sketch that I had to do in an emergency meeting with the chairman. So if you look carefully at this uh, site plan, you'll see that the road goes around the outside, actually in the setback, and there are two ramps into a basement uh, in this 10 acre site. And we can park more than 500 cars there. There's also a kitchen and a dining hall uh, at a lower level. And right in the middle of the plan is a pedestrian precinct. It's a, it's a place for people only, no vehicles. And it's a place people can break out and come out in the daytime. We also wanted to have a low rise building, ground plus two. At one place it's ground plus three. But my client started off saying, no, we have 10 acres. We want to build a 20 story building. So I said, no, let's not have a skyscraper. Let's have a ground scraper. Let's let people be close to the ground. They can walk out and they can go into the gardens in the daytime. So these are models we built with our carpenter. This is the training center. And uh, it's, it's got indoor outdoor spaces. It's got uh, porches outside. It's got terraces. And uh, OK, maybe people here recognize this. This is called Fatafo Sikri uh, in Agra. It was built by Akbar. And it's a place we can learn from because it, it's a, a very similar kind of a problem. Uh, he wanted to create a, a kind of a new city, but he didn't want elephants and camels and horses running around inside the city. So he built this big pedestrian space inside. He brought water inside, and he made the ground floor structures open out into that pedestrian area. And he played with water and space and people, keeping out other things. So from that, I learned a few things. Uh, and we have water inside this building. We have the lower floors open out into porches and terraces. And we even have a kind of a sloped uh, roof on the top. Uh, even even you, you saw those chajas and Sathatabha Sikri. And here inside this building, you can see in the roof uh, photovoltaic cells, which are generating electricity. And they, they filter light down into a very traditional water body uh, where people can come and break out. And you can see here, even the uh, photovoltaic cells reflecting nicely into the water. This is in the middle of the training center. Now, you'll all recognize this. This is here in Kerala. Now, what did I learn from visiting temples like this? I think Babu Nainan took me to so many beautiful temples many, many years ago. I learned that there, uh, you can go back for a second. I learned that there are deep stums. I learned to use jollies to keep the sun out and to let the breeze in, to have a, a, a contained pedestrian space inside the building. So all of those lessons I brought into Sluzlan One Earth, and I used uh, louvers instead of jollies. I have sloped roofs. I had the open space. I have water, and I also have the deep stump. This picture is interesting because when we started using uh, these jollies, people said you wouldn't be able to see out. The same thing they said in Cochin refineries. So we, we, we show people this picture that at nighttime you can see right through the building. The, the louvers don't stop you from looking out, but they stop the sun from coming in. This is how the system works. On the left-hand side, you see an image of the louvers. Uh, and you can walk between the glass wall and the louvers. You can clean the louvers and the glass without hanging from a building. And on the outside, and this is the internal, very large space. You can see the deep stum. You can see a waterfall. That one big deep stump gives an identity to the whole project. It gives a sense of place. So we learned to pick up ideas from India. And I always tell people, don't go abroad to study architecture. Travel around India. Go to Kerala. Go to Chola temples. Go to um, major Mughal projects in North India. 
and you'll learn a lot. Now on the right here, you see a glass cylinder, and that glass cylinder is a chimney, and it gets hot because glass heats up when sun hits it. But if you look at the bottom of that cylinder, you can see trees which are growing in the basement, and in the top, you can see the sky is open. So as the air heats up, it starts rising rapidly, and it sucks air out of the basement and gives natural ventilation. So it's an energy free way to ventilate a very large basement with about 500 automobiles in it. And these uh, glass uh, elements became kind of a theme of the whole project. Uh, this is the chairman's area, and the entrances to all the other uh, company areas have these glass cylinders. Now, we have uh, an old family called the Kirloskers in Pune, and they own industries from Karnataka up to Bombay, Pune. And they, they've been running a management school for the last, I think, 70 years. And they wanted to build a new campus in Pune. So we built the Kaloskar uh, Institute of Advanced Management Studies. It's also on the fringe of Pune uh, in a hill slope. And uh, we built it in phases. This is the first phase, which involves uh, hostels and teaching areas and a kind of sungum, which has seminar halls and it has uh, dining halls, et cetera. Now, like the other project, when I started, I wanted to draw a conceptual sketch. So in this, I was trying to search for something to give identity to, the, to this project. It rains very heavily in this area. So I wanted sloped roofs, which would drain the roofs, and I wanted a copper-colored roof, which is a bit expensive. But then I found a company called CalZip, which would laminate a very thin veneer of copper on aluminum and have insulation inside. So I came up with a plan that had a central space like Suzlan. It had a road around it, around the edges, like Suzlan. And it had, uh, on the left-hand side, all the hostels for the boys and girls, an executive hostel. And on the right, it had offices. And then inside, it had courtyards. And it had uh, various classrooms and laboratories. So there's a kind of a fabric to this, where we have these very interesting roofs. And we have spaces inside. And we have uh, the copper roofs, which you can see here. So when I design a building, I try to come up with a language, like something which will be imageable, like this copper roof, and other things to be pretty simple, like the exposed concrete and white plaster walls. In this case, I learned something from Akbar's tomb, those circles. In Akbar's tomb, uh, there are columns all the way around the four sides of the tomb. And if you stand and look through the columns, there are holes that you can see people peeping through down at the other end. And I thought that was a rather fun uh, thing to bring into architecture. So again, you can learn from your context ideas. And this is a building full of interior courtyards and spaces. Very simple language of exposed concrete, white plaster walls, and these copper roofs. And when they come together in the sun gum in the middle, this is where the seminar halls, the dining halls, and meeting places are. You get a very nice feeling, almost like a village or a town center. And we had fun um, making artwork in the walls by just exposing uh, concrete, taking exposed concrete and putting murals on it and, and getting nice, interesting things. This was actually in the original sketch I showed you. It's a big dining hall, and I, I actually took the idea from early sketches, and I could make a very large dining hall that's open glass all the way around, has a skylight on the roof and a big space inside, which is used even for seminars. A space like this with a nice wood ceiling. Very traditional kind of ceiling, like many old buildings in Kerala are, are across India. And it's used for functions like this was a lecture that was just getting over. So it's a fun place. It's a place for young people. It's a place for education. But it has a very distinct architectural character. So people who study here have memories. They have iconic points to take photographs. And it gives them something to carry through their life. Now. Recently, we finished this project for Mr. Rahul Bajaj in Warda. Warda is where the Bajaj family hosted Gandhi uh, after he left Ahmedabad. So this is the Bajaj Institute of Technology. It's a, a complete institute of technology. Uh, it's, it's, a very, it's already very successful in its first opening. In fact, the building is still getting the last touches of completion. What you see here is a big courtyard in the middle. And you might see that's almost become something that I always do. There's always an internal pedestrian courtyard, and the vehicles and other things are kept outside. So this is the, the courtyard, and you can see these uh, square buildings. There are classrooms inside around the courtyard. 
And I'll show you later, there's, there's a big passage that goes around. So this is a 3D Max uh, picture of the courtyard, the way we wanted it to look. At the end is a big tower, which is near the entrance. And this is looking down that space to a library at the end. And you can see the classroom buildings have louvers again, this time vertical. Now, three weeks ago, we opened this uh, facility with Nandan Nilkantan uh, giving the inaugural lecture. And this is what the building actually looks like from the outside, where we use these big windows into courtyards inside the Institute. They became kind of the eyes of the building, as if the building was a person and had eyes looking outside. And it makes a very interesting kind of a spatial sequence. This is the entrance from the outside. You come through these triangles into a central uh, welcome center, um, and you get this kind of vaults on the ceiling and large concrete columns. This is when people come to visit, or they enter the campus, they come to this large space. And we had great fun with the structure. I like to make art out of the structure. In this case, it's a very fluid kind of a system with a big space, uh, which gives the students a sense of pride and welcoming. Now, when you come through that space, you go on out under a triangle into the central courtyard. This is very recently getting finished. We haven't done the planting yet inside the courtyard, but you can see the, the, the towers and the library and things emerging here. It's a very important center uh, of studies in, in Maharashtra. We have many uh, engineering colleges, which frankly are going empty. This college is over uh, subscribed to right in the first year. And uh, you can see here, I use jack arches in the passageways. And you can see that there are levels, there's ground level first and second. So what happens is that the, the, the walkway in the ground is twice as wide as the walkway above. And you can look down from the upper levels, one level into the other, and it makes it a very exciting kind of experience to walk around the campus. So this is on the top level with skylights, look all the way down into the passage on the ground floor. And uh, of course, students like to look at each other from the top and from the bottom up. And these are the courtyards separating laboratories from each other. And each courtyard has one of these interesting triangles, which are the eyes of the building looking out. And our, our classrooms are, are very uh, typical, simple classrooms, but you can see in the ceiling, we have an air cooling system, not an air conditioning system, but we have an evaporative cooling system. And this is the large workshop. On the south side, you can see a jolly set behind those columns is a metal jolly, uh, which you can see here in this picture. These are also uh, drawn from history, from Indian uh, mogul buildings in particular, and they, they filter light and make it a very, give a very nice feeling of light. I also like to do these kind of trusses in the ceiling, which have skylights over them. Uh, I like to do steel buildings because I can design the whole structure myself. If you do RCC buildings, you need a structural designer to do a lot of calculations. Steel buildings have their own rationale. They're like wood buildings. You can see the, the, the forces moving and design. <clears throat> so if you make a truss and put a skylight over it, it filters light down into the building. It's a very nice experience. This is a video Ramprasad made just about a month ago uh, for the opening of this facility. These are the young architects who worked with me on this project.
again, my team, Bob and I would recognize Darius Chelsea there, who worked with us on coaching the finance 20 odd years ago. India's top, I think one of the top architects, he has a lot of work for us and especially the Ajay Institute of Technology. And I think he and his team deserve a tremendous credit and congratulations. You have seen the full uh, college that uh, I can see it's obviously something great. CCBA, Christopher Tellinger Associate, congratulations and for doing a really unique and outstanding job. That was Rahul Bajaj who donated all of the funds to this project. I'm glad you chose round pillars because round pillars do not uh, stop the flight of my sight. And then everywhere uh, find lines. None of the lines offends. None of the lines uh, tells me to stop. There is nothing hiding. There, there are no dark spots here. There are no dark spots here. I think great architecture can only happen with a, a great client who wants great things. He should be a humanist. He should be ready to invest in great spaces and good, good buildings. So this is my latest building. It was just opened three weeks ago. Now, I think uh, industries is a new thing in India. Uh, over the last 25 years, uh, agriculture has declined as a part of our gross national product. And, and services like IT, even architecture, uh, have grown and more or less taken the place of agriculture as the main contributor to the economy. But manufacturing has stayed about the same. That is the same percentage of the GNP over the last 20 years. It, it's not that it hasn't grown. It has grown at the same rate as the economy, but its proportionate place in the economy has remained the same. So it's very interesting for our firm to take up. Uh, suddenly, we got interested in industries, and we did this big boiler factory, and two or three other buildings are coming up at this Forbes industrial estate outside of Pune. So there's a big boiler factory here, which is 110 meters by 110 meters. And you can see it in the middle of this picture. Uh, this is a model we made when I was designing the structure. Basically, the structure has big 18-meter-long uh, trusses with skylights on top, and there are per purlins running between them to hold up a calzip aluminum roof with skylights in it. And then you have steel columns with big uh, railway tracks to, to hold uh, gantries that move back and forth. Uh, to pick up large loads of five to 10 tons. So designing this structure was the first challenge for me. I love designing structures. I don't like to give this to my engineers, but I do ask my, I have an engineer friend who vets my structures. He, after I design them uh, and we make a model of it, he then puts it on his, his software and makes sure that it's not gonna fall down. But look at the scale of this. This is a very poetic building, but it's a very large building, uh, a very, very beautiful kind of a white structure which later became a, a huge factory. This is the south elevation, which you can see is, is an aluminum jolly. It's actually panels uh, of aluminum with holes in it to filter light in, like you saw in the uh, Bajaj Institute. But this is a very, very huge factory. Uh, light goes in under the roof that projects out above, and it comes in through these jollies. So in the daytime, we don't have to use any uh, electricity to, to illuminate this very, very large plant. And this is a, another factory across the street facing north. That was south. The north we left open, the glass, with the large overhang. And with the low uh, curvilineal buildings, they're actually offices for uh, the managers, for the, the canteen, for the sanitary facilities, and even for the tax officials which work there. Now here, you see inside, 
You can see the steel columns. You can see those round cloth uh, ventilating socks, we call them, made out of cloth. And uh, air is blown through those so that we can change the air six times every hour and keep very clean air inside the factory. Those yellow gantries move back and forth on railway tracks and they can lift up huge uh, these boilers and other items. So here again, you can see the yellow gantries in the top, which can move back and forth through the whole factory uh, from down at that end where the raw materials come in and then they come out the end we're looking at. And you can see the skylights through the big uh, trusses. Now, another project which we just finished, in fact, yesterday, it won the national award for the Indian Institute of Architects is called Krone Marshall. This is a German factory uh, near Pune in, in an industrial town. And uh, it started in 1984. Uh, the building was coming old. It's on a very small plot, one acre. Uh, so the issue was in the small 22,000 square foot uh, factory that made uh, flow valves that uh, calibrate and measure the amount of liquids that go through very finely made stainless steel pipe. I mean, how to, how to continue, the, the Germans were saying, we're gonna go to China, we would have lost jobs. So we said, no, we can actually extend your old factory in the one acre site and add a new uh, factory with an administrative building. Previously, they were renting space for the administrative. This has parking in the basement for 25 cars. This has a, a training center. And you can see this power plant in the front with the chimney for the diesel. Again, on the left, the chimney for the diesel power plant and a very large rig made of stainless steel, which was a new, a new rig, which made the factory technologically very advanced. So it's a very simple architecture, uh, again, using jollies to bind the old building, which you see in the left uh, with the new building, which came up uh, using the same jolly. So when you look at the building, it looks like it's all one building, uh, but actually it's a very old building, uh, more than 30 years old in a new building. So this was a very successful project. We used, again, these louvers to jollies to let light in. This is upstairs, a breakout space for having lunch and uh, brings a lot of light into the middle of the administrative area. This is the, the shop floor. Again, the yellow gantries. This is the, the big uh, testing rig in which they put different sizes of valves to test the flow in them. This is a big stainless steel tower that drops water and it, it, it reaches a very high pressure at the bottom. And then it runs through uh, the pipes being manufactured and tests the, the flow of uh, fluids through those pipes. These are the jollies. There's a separation between the glass inside and the jolly outside. It's a very high precision kind of industry <clears throat> because they make valves. This is the old building. It connects with these bridges to the new building, integrating the old with the new. And the new building has higher floor levels because it has larger equipment. And we get this lovely space uh, which connects the two buildings together. This is Jessica. She worked problems. with me on this project. Actually, the whole idea was to make the maximum small space that we had. And one of the big things was to how we can take heavy equipment from manufacturing on the higher floors, uh, which was a challenge. And the new bombs did not allow to uh, integrate the whole building into the new one. But we found a way out. Now, this is a factory which is different because it's vertical. We have three floors which are available for the inspection. And at the top of it, there is always we have added training walls and two other things. And it is become one complete product. Product by itself, it means there is a factory, there is an office.
So that's a very recent project of mine also. We had a great, great team working on this together. Now this is a, a, a project we've been working on for many years in Nagpur. It's a Buddhist center, and it's a kind of sacred complex there. Uh, uh, Dr. Ambekar converted to Buddhism in Nagpur uh, in 1953, and there are many, many Buddhists in this region. I think it's the largest density in India of Buddhists. So Nagloka is a training center. Uh, they teach uh, the lessons about Buddha, but it also is a place where they teach social work, and they teach people from low-income communities uh, how to do social work, etc. This is a Dhamma hall. It's a place where uh, lectures are given on the values of Buddhism, the theory of Buddhism, etc. And it's a very simple building. Uh, this is the entrance made of brick. Everything here is made of raw brick and exposed concrete. This is a large statue actually donated uh, by friends of ours in Shanghai. And there's a, a Chinese sculpture, sculptor who made that. And you would recognize the Dalai Lama here. This is the Dhamma Hall. It's a building which is now more than 20 years old. It was the first building we built there. Uh, these exposed concrete arches are not arches. They're actually shells which span 60 feet long. It's like taking a piece of paper and bending it and holding it either at end. It won't collapse because of the shell or the bending moment. It's a nice large space, 60 feet by 60 feet clear span, where many meetings take place. And these are different residential buildings around the campus hostels and dharmshalas and buildings of that nature. There's also a large library here and classrooms. And uh, there's something like uh, 190 students from all over India uh, studying here, from the Northeast tribal areas uh, down into the South India and from North India. This is a meditation hall where you go down a secret passage and you come into a courtyard inside. So it, it has a Roof, which it just covers a, a pavilion inside, and then there's a wall with a garden around. It's a very peaceful place to meditate. Now, this is another project which we finished about a year ago. It's called Loda Belmondo. This is a community on the Pune Bombay Expressway on the edge of the city. It's about 15 minutes from our IT city, and it's about 20 minutes from Chakan New Industrial Estate. It's a very large uh, township for about 3,000 families. In, in about in 3,000 residences. Now it's on a river, the Pauna River, and you see the expressway above it. So it's between these two boundaries, a river, and we've kept a 100 meter setback from the river. We actually kept 170 meters. The, 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 the law in Maharashtra is 100 meters, but we looked at the high flood level in the past and we kept it back. And then it's set about 45 meters off the expressway. And in the middle we have a big central park. There's a history behind this because when Mr. Loto bought this, he, there, there was an idea of having a DP road run through the thing, but that was shifted. So we turned it into a central park. Uh, we have a small mini golf course there. We have jogging areas. We have a uh, urban forest along the river and the buildings are, are neatly put in the back. There, if, if you have 3000 housing units on 100 acres, that makes 30 units per acre which is high density, but actually the, the open spaces are 65% and, and the footprint of buildings are only 10%. And the roads are about 9% and about 15% goes for parking. So we get net densities of about 70 units per acre, which is very, very high inside the system. But at the same time, the footprints are very small, 10%, as I said, all these 29 towers. So the distance between the towers is quite uh, generous. It's about 70 meters. And these are some study models we made of different towers. And this is how it faces on the Pana River. Now in Pune, if you look at our city, we have five rivers, but if you move in the city, you never see rivers because people have built illegally right up to the riverfront and they've blocked the views. Even the buildings don't face onto the river. So you, you live in Pune, but you don't ever see the rivers unless you're crossing a bridge and they tend to be messy and uncared for. Uh, in this project, it, it has turns its back onto the expressway, uh, and it faces onto the Pana River. This is the clubhouse. It's about a 65,000 square foot clubhouse. And those towers behind are actually studio apartments for young people. This is a community that has space for people in the IT industry, maybe 28 years old, but they're earning a good salary, so they want to buy a one-bedroom 
studio apartment. So we have something for everyone, uh, even 4,000 square foot duplays. And here you can see about 70 meters between the towers inside the campus and small pocket parks you can see below. This again is a, another park uh, facing onto the central park. And in the clubhouse, there's a swimming pool. And on the right is a neighborhood park uh, for children and for older people. And then you have this big central park. So there are two green pathways crossing each other. One runs through the campus and, and you can see there are pools of water. And there's a drainage system from the original time before this project came. So we've tried to preserve and enhance that drainage system uh, to stop flooding. And then we have all this beautiful 65% of this project is open space with a lovely clubhouse. This clubhouse is probably the best clubhouse in Pune. Uh, it, it's got everything, gym, games, a sauna, restaurants, the small theater, uh, and beautiful porches overlooking the central garden, central park. History of Western India evolves around two great metropolises: one a center of ideas and culture, the other a center of commerce and international trade. Pune and Bombay are linked by this great expressway on which people travel back and forth every day. It's hardly one hour between Panvel and Pune, and our project is like many other projects we call strip development along this expressway. Our project has its back facing the expressway and its front facing into a green area and the Pana River. We're standing here on the Pana River in Pune. It's one of the five rivers that characterize this city. All civilizations were founded on rivers, and we were fortunate to get a site to bring a community on the riverside. Here in Loda Belmondo, we have facilities for boating, fishing, and picnicking, and we're creating a community which is river-based and focused on the river. It's about 4.5 million square feet. It's a very large project. I'm standing here in the middle of two green corridors which cross. One is the Central Park, which acts as a catchment area for water, and it comes down and stores water in several ponds in which we have ducks and wildlife. And then we have this urban forest. This is a place where 3,000 families can come on weekends. They can go on walks when they want, and it creates a beautiful green environment for the community. I'm standing here on the Pauna River, walking up to an urban forest, which we created along the side of the river, to give a place for people to escape from everything and come and meditate, to walk, to be here in the evening. There's a lot of forestry here with birds and animals. We have many neighborhood playgrounds and sit-out areas where families can come in the daytime or late afternoon and just relax in their own neighborhood. I've written poems. Oh, really? I, yeah, I have, I have said that the have you seen the river, a river fly? Me as an artist, like you know, I feel it's a paradise. So that's Lota Belmondo. It's actually the largest uh, new residential community in Pune, a metropolis of about 10 million people. Now I'm going up to Bhutan. Uh, into the uh, capital city of Timpu. We did the, this, the capital plan about 20 years ago. I first went to Bhutan in 1979 when there were only 5,000 people living in the capital. And when we started doing the plan, the population had grown by 19, 2001 up to 37,000 people. And I think today it's much more than a lakh population in this small valley. Uh, so this is a, uh, the capital complex. In the middle of the city, we did the city plan, and then we did a plan for the capital complex because His Majesty was planning to bring in democracy, and he needed a large open ceremonial space for the 
people of Bhutan to gather in large numbers. Instead of in that fortress monastery, which you see right in the middle, there's a 12th century fortress monastery where His Majesty and the government used to operate from. This is my sketch of it in the mountains. And then since people could not fit inside, we wanted to build this big open space based on a mandala. The plan is based on a mandala, which is an Im image of the universe and the cosmos. So on the left is the old Fortis Monastery, and the right is this big open space. Mainly it's used for things like when the new king was coronated or a, uh, a prime minister is sworn in, are very large uh, Buddhist ceremonies. These are the drawings we did, how to integrate with the old building into the new. And we wanted to build a lot of balconies on the old building so that the Jai Kimpo, he's like the Dalai Lama of Bhutan, could come out on these terraces and balconies. His Majesty's family could come out and that the elected government could come on the bottom with the people <clears throat> when big ceremonies take place, which is very often. And here uh, we, we use local craftsmen. This is blue pine wood being carved for the columns. So we use the traditional columns, and you can see these beams uh, with the capitals flying out. And the, these wood pine tends to crack and split apart. So it's wrapped in linen, uh, which is soaked in the sap from blue pine trees, and then it's let to dry. And then it's painted with these beautiful colors, uh, local colors. The young man standing there is the new king of Bhutan. And these are all monks who live inside of the fortress monastery. And when we have a big celebration there, it looks something like this. You get hundreds and thousands of people coming here. In this case, the, it's raining and uh, people are still there dancing, etc. So it's a very exciting space uh, where up to 20,000 people can meet for various uh, functions, annual events uh, and uh, religious activities. North of that, because we, we did get de democracy, you need to have a Supreme Court, as you all know, uh, to rule over legislation which may be uh, counter to the Constitution, or even to rule over uh, judgments of criminal cases which might actually be condemning someone to death where the Constitution would say, sorry, you can't do that. So we designed the Supreme Court of Bhutan. It's a gift of the government of India, the people of India, to the people of Bhutan, because if you have a Constitution, somebody has to be there to judge uh, whether things happening in the country are constitutional or not. So on the left, you see the full bench court, four single bench courts, and on the right, you see a library, judicial library, and at the bottom, all the offices. It's again around a courtyard, uh, something you, you notice I always do, make a public domain for the people, a pedestrian area. And this is just a diagram of the building. And it sits into the landscape. It, it looks like a traditional building, but in the entire Himalayan region, uh, it's the only Supreme Court, so it's a very modern function built in the culture of construction of that area, which is dolomite stone and blue pine and uh, metal sheet roofing. Very simple construction, actually. But we have beautiful woodwork here. And here you can see way down to the, uh, the, the fortress monastery. If you look, the high court main building focuses on the, the most uh, ancient temple inside of the fortress monastery, the Utsi. It's a very sacred place in the, in the country. So. You can even see there's a small monastery on the hill above. So our architecture fits in with the architecture of the place. We didn't want to bring steel and glass and sort of jam it into this society. And plus, we could use the woodworking skills of these people, the good stonework, and come up with a very interesting kind of an idea. You might recognize this young man who's inaugurating this, this project. Two weeks after he became prime minister, he went to Bhutan with the Prime Minister of Bhutan to inaugurate the opening of the Supreme Court of Bhutan. Now see the woodwork. This kind of woodwork we cannot do in India. If we did, it would be very expensive. I'm not saying we couldn't do it, but it would cost a fortune just to build this one uh, wall of windows, which looked down to the fortress monastery from the main court. Now I'm taking you up to Shanghai. This is a project we're doing uh, for a scientist, Ging Meiyu. She's invented a cure for Alzheimer's disease. And uh, that would probably be announced in the next year, but it's cleared all stages of testing, stage one, two, three. And now they're testing the production methodology that our client who owns Green Valley Pharmacy 
this is a completely Chinese company, Chinese scientists who have discovered a cure for Alzheimer's disease. And we met them because uh, one, we, our book, Letters to a Young Architect, in 2013 was translated into Chinese. And we made a tour, Ram and I, of universities there. And we took inspiration from buildings like this in Beijing, the Temple of Heaven. That's a round building, beautiful building. Or this Wudong Shan, it's where Tai Chi was invented and where uh, Buddhism flourished in the uh, 15th century, particularly under the Ming Dynasty. And again, things went in a circle. You climbed up to the top of this golden platform, it's called. It's the center of Taoism. This is a, a village uh, in the middle of China where to protect themselves in medieval times, they built round, uh, ground plus two-story structures. So this round idea attracted us now. And we also visited a lot of classical Chinese gardens. So we wanted to have a garden inside of a circle. This was the first idea. And we developed the concept out of that. This is the emblem of Green Valley. It's three fish uh, going in a circle, which is very auspicious in China. So the circle is very important. So is the yin and yang idea of balance, no? good and evil and balance in life. So we came up with a plan that looks like this. Um, there's an entrance facing south, a, a Chinese classical garden inside, and uh, on the ground floor, things like dining halls and exhibition centers and conference centers, and nine stories of laboratories for 2,800 scientists to work, trying to find discoveries for things like uh, dementia or Parkinson's disease. So it's what, probably in the world, the largest single building doing research on the brain. So before, which is nice, before they're even earning money, selling the Alzheimer drug, they want to spend all of that money on more research instead of on Mercedes Benz's and Audi's and things like that. So it's a very important social project because uh, Ging Mayu thinks that she can crack even Parkinson's disease. So that's a section through the building, looking into the courtyard. On the outside, it looks like this. Those tall vertical towers are exhaust uh, towers to take fumes out of fume hoods uh, in laboratories. And inside, we have this step section down into the garden. So people can come out of the laboratories and have breakout spaces looking into the garden. It's a very interesting structure on a 10-acre site, about 2 million square feet. And I'm happy to see another developing country like India making breakouts into scientific discoveries. This is a small video that uh, Ram has made of the project.
So we call that project the Eye of Wisdom. So now you've seen work that we've done uh, from India, Bhutan, and China. So we're quite busy, and this gives you a good idea of what we're up to. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for that very interesting presentation on some of the most brilliant architectural ideas and sustainable, beautiful structures. We are truly speechless. Now it's time for some interaction. If anyone in the audience has any doubts or need any clarification or any questions, please raise your hands. We'll come to you. If there are any questions, don't be shy. I'm always happy when there are no questions. It makes my life easier. Okay, thank you very much. I, I enjoyed Can coming and seeing her. And thank you, uh, Asset. You're, you've done a wonderful job of hosting this, no? Sunil? Thank you, sir. Can we have a big round of applause once again? As a token of our respect and gratitude to the distinguished speaker, may I invite Dr. Father Prashant Palakapalil, Principal Sacred Hearts College, Tevara, to hand over a moment to the chief guest in the presence of our directors. Director Sri Mohan okay. and Dr. Father We must, we must build Pantipi. a church together here in, in Kerala. I'd love to do a church. Okay, thank you so much. I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you, Silas. Thank you once again. Let's all now rise for the national anthem. Janagana mana adhinayaka jayahe bharata bhagya vidhata Punjab, Sindh, Gujarat, Maratha, Dravida, Uttala, Vanga, Vindya, Himachala, Yamuna, Ganga, Uchala, Jaladhi, Taranga, Tava, Shubha, Name, Jage, Tava, Shubha, Ashish, Mange, Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Janagana Mangala Dayak Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vibhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He Jaya 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 He